Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I wish I was a developer. I wish I could program. I wish I was an information architect. I wish I could design websites and web pages. I, I can't. I can tell you what I like and what I don't necessarily like, uh, but these are all roles that are important for creating good software, whether it happens to be web-based inside a web browser, uh, whether it happens to be something that you never see on the web, but it's internet-based, um, or something on your desktop. I mean, every step of the way, you need to have these roles fulfilled. Now, if you are a, a jack of all trades, hopefully not a master of none, um, you're lucky. If you could do it all, you're very lucky. Uh, I mean, uh, there are a few of those people around, and if they are around, I've, I've only met a couple of them, and they're usually too busy to help me do the things that I want to do. <clears throat> so, I, I thought I would try to help some of you get a jump start on your career uh, with uh, sharing Grant's top 10 tips for young programmers. And you know, Grant is geeky because his signature uh, is in binary, ones and zeros at the bottom of his email. <clears throat> so, he's got uh, 10 very uh, short tips, but useful, uh, specifically if you are a young programmer. And I suppose young programmer could be defined less by age and just more by experience. Number one, read. If you do not like spending a lot of time reading, you should not program. When you're learning a computer language, you must be willing to spend hours reading books, websites, magazine articles, etc. Two, take your time finding the language that is right for you. Think about what you want to do when programming a computer. Remember, once you learn computer language, it's easy to learn another. They say the same thing about foreign languages. Number three, when you start to make a program, really spend some time on what you want it to do. I cannot tell you how many times I just started a project and then realized it was useless. Number four, use flowcharts. Flowcharting allows you to organize your code and make it efficient. It's very true, and this is where information architecture really can come in handy uh, because not only, yeah, let's say you've got something that you want the user to do, but if you haven't worked out how that's going to happen, and then worse yet, it's implemented in a way that the user's never going to be able to figure out, well, that's just failure. And flowcharting can help you uh, define that process if the platform isn't uh, already built with some of that flow in mind. Number five, back everything up. When you start to program, there's a good chance that you might mess something up and fry your computer. Give yourself a safety net and back everything up. Number six, when you've made some significant progress, and by the way, that is so true. It sounds so weird, but I know of plenty of programs that have just died because the developer lost the code. For years, the Foenity icons, not programs, it's media, but Foenity, that's how I've always said it, um, P-H-O-E-N-I-T-Y, Dot com. Maybe I shouldn't say that out loud unless I can confirm that. Maybe one of the people in the chat room can. Um, he he did these icons that I just loved, but then he lost all the original sources and didn't even upload them to the web. I was like, oh, you're killing me, man. So backup is important. Number six, when you've made some significant uh, progress in your program, save it. It never hurts anyone to save things and this may uh, tie into using something like SVN uh, not just for code check-ins but uh, logging and and then backup as well number seven comment your code if you leave a project and later come back to it you will have probably forgotten how it worked commenting your code will help you with comments you do not have to read through the whole thing instead you can look at your comments and get an idea of what's going on true and I, I tell you, commenting is so important, so important. Generic comments don't do you any good. They don't do anybody else any good. Uh, commenting is like, it's crucial. It's crucial to good development because I tell you, I've worked with developers who didn't comment, and you know what? Their code worked for the time being, but then as soon as you need to make any changes, it was useless because they made shortcuts, or they took shortcuts, I should say. Number eight, don't be afraid to ask for help. 
Microsoft is a great website and database for programmers. Also, check out their blog and ask questions. There's always someone who's willing to help. And of course, it goes beyond just Microsoft. I mean, you can you can develop on OS 10, you can develop on Linux, you can develop anywhere, really. Uh, you know, as long as you found a good development environment, you're set. Number nine. This goes back to my first point. Get a book. Your local school or library will most likely have books on programming. Check them out and learn from them. And you'd be surprised. I mean, you'd say, well, why would I want to learn a language that, you know, really no one's using anymore? Uh, when I was in college, they were still teaching uh, COBOL and Fortran because a lot of enterprise applications were still relying on those languages. And they're, you know, maybe not as modern as some other languages are, but there's still applications programmed in, uh, in those languages, so it's important for you to stay up to speed on as much as you possibly can and want to. It never hurts to learn more. Number 10, when you've started to make programs, let other people try them out. You could ask people to evaluate them, or you could give them out as freeware. Start a website and let people download them if you want. Uh, that's true. K-Tech and I think Granite, Grantit, Grant IT, uh, have been designing the widgets for the live video feeds that we do and with Ustream and whatnot, and did a pretty good job uh, with uh, with them. And I'm constantly giving them feedback like this, 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 do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Uh, you never really know. Oh, the stream is apparently frozen for some people. Hopefully not for everybody. We've been uh, having some issues with Ustream.tv, and uh, they're working on them. And so I apologize if, if that's the case. But if you're watching this video when it's not live, well, then hopefully you're not experiencing any random hiccups. We do stream this video out live over the Internet, which might explain some of the, the uh, pauses and the dropped frames and the uh, maybe not as amazing quality as if we were just recording it in HD. But if you had, a, if you had a, the, the, to make a decision between watching it live or being at a live recording of something or watching it on tape, which would you rather experience? The live or the not so live? I mean, if you had the time, at the time, to watch, that's why we like live. I'm doing it all the time. I'm like, like always live. And uh, you, can, uh, you can join us in the chat room. We're typically talking tech, sometimes sharing tips and tricks. You can submit your own uh, easily. Just email me, chris at perillo.com. Uh, especially if you think you've got, uh, if you are a triple threat, if you can design well, if you can program well, and you understand usability. Because I don't think that, that's like the unicorn of uh, the geek world. That's just, there's just no such person. Or if they, if they do exist, they probably charge about a million dollars an hour. Yeah, rare breed, rare breed indeed. Well, anyway, if you want to join us in the live uh, chat room, as opposed to the one that's never live, and we've got the video feed going out over the internet, and even if I'm not here, other people certainly are, and uh, we're waiting for you. So what are you waiting for? We're at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.